Hello everyone. Welcome back to another edition of MindFit Podcast. My name is Robert Aceves and I'm here with Neil Babbins. How you doing, Neil? I'm doing great. How about yourself? I'm doing great. Um, I'm actually uh, testing this new software that, you know, hopefully will eventually allow us to record ourselves so we can post it on um, YouTube and start posting our um, podcast on YouTube now live. See how it goes. <laughs> Great technology moving forward. Yeah, I'm still catching yeah. up to the old technology. So, <laughs> yeah, no, it's so good. good. How was your weekend, by the way? Weekend was really good. I was uh, I visited San Diego, uh, social distancing, of course, and I was uh, on a beach and uh, it was nice to f feel my feet in the sand. And it was really hot for San Diego. You know, it was like uh, almost like L.A. weather. Um, it was really beautiful, really relaxing, um, really, really nice to just sit there and just, you know, uh, reset myself. So uh, it was a nice, nice drive and very, very quiet. I just uh, spent a nice time just kicking back for a couple of days. And um, it was it was actually very, very peaceful, very relaxing, you know, and uh, nice. not not that far. And the traffic's not that not that bad, of course, because, uh, well, actually coming back into L.A. a little bit was a little bit of a little bit of a cram. But um, I came back on Monday morning, but um, not too bad. It was really nice. Really nice. How Very about yours? Cool. Yeah. 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 You know, um, it's sad because uh, they just closed everything back down. So it's like, oh, my gosh, we were just starting to get back into a, some kind of normal. Mm -hmm. And then suddenly they closed everything on Monday, I think, this week. So yeah. now we, uh, we're back to quarantine, which, mm -hmm. you know, hopefully uh, it's not as long as last time, you know. I know the gyms are closed back down, hair salons are closed back down, and um, yeah, just when we thought we we're moving in a certain direction, you know, it's mm -hmm. it goes back in the other way. But who knows? Hopefully, it won't be for too long until you know. Hopefully, the spikes will start to come down again. And uh, yeah, I, I think it's really messing with people a lot. You know, people are really uh, not knowing what to expect and feeling out of control and a loss of control over there you know, over their daily lives in so many ways because the decisions are not theirs, you know. It's it's not up to them if something shuts down or stays open or, you know. Um, every every store that I went into is there's a, there's there's changes, at least when I was in San Diego, like Starbucks or a clothing store or whatever it may be, but social distancing, wearing masks. And even in Starbucks, I noticed there weren't, the condiments were not available for you. You know, I went, I went to doctor up my coffee and I'm like, oh, there's nothing here. You have to ask for it. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> Forget it. That's, I'm fine. They put soy milk into my black god. I'm, I'm fine. I don't need any sweetener. It's probably better, healthier for me if I don't have any. So I just I walked out. I just got used to it, you know. But now <laughs> I've you know then everything then you know. But I was looking forward to being able to go back to the gym. I think a lot of people were, you know. But um, working out at home has been okay. But uh, for me, it's not the same. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's it's Definitely. tough. Yeah. Yeah. And I just I just went to downtown Disney recently and you know I love going back to somewhat of an idea of what it, Disney was like. Um uh, I know Disneyland is closed but uh, at least downtown Disney is still open. I don't know how much longer but you know the thing that sucks is you have to wear a mask the whole time when you're there and uh, you know it's okay but I mean I know it's a it's a health thing that we need to do. But at the same time, you know, I'm I'm grateful that at least we can do that, you know, and go in the, into the world of Disney store and just hang out, which is, you know, something uh, fun to do sometimes. Um, yeah. But anyway, today um, we're going to be talking about how algorithms are changing our lives. It We already talked about social media last time. We talked about the good things and the bad things and how, you know, all these companies use algorithms to, to change and to shape our lives in some way or another. But, you know, today we're going to go a little bit deeper into algorithms. I, I find the subject very interesting. Um, I've been trying to learn programming for quite some time. And, you know, my mind is more creative, so it's a lot harder for me to just be more logical. But it's a good it's a good skill to have, you know, to learn to program, to, to do that. And in the near future, I can tell you, a lot of jobs are going to be, you know, gone. And the only people that are going to be able to work are people who know how to program. And maybe you know, a few people who know how to clean things, because I don't know if computers can clean things as, as well as we do as humans, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, moving forward, that's, uh, 
it remains to be seen what occupations become more, uh, taken over by technology and uh, how people can innovate their own current uh, professions and look ahead, look forward. It's hard to know exactly how it's going to unfold, but you know, there, I think there are certain professions that will always be uh, around because creativity will always be is something that um, you know is important. But the actual function of business, if you if you make something like if you make pottery or you make jewelry, you're the one who's making it. Or if you're a writer, you're the one who's writing it. But how it's distributed, you know, how it gets to people, how you know how your business is set up and how your business is run, may end up being completely programmed by algorithms and um, how to market, how to promote. You know how to distribute, how to uh, how to even make sales and even accept payments and whatnot may have a lot less to do with um, you know with with um, all the things that you got used to having the freedom to do prior because everybody's uh, taking it over with machines. Well, the old the old way of saying it, it was taking it over with machines, but you know, um, yeah, and and um, education as well. You know who they're going to allow into certain. Pro just I thought of that when you talked about algorithm algorithms again. Who who gets accepted to what programs? You know what demographics? You know, um, yeah, everything could shift, and so people may yeah. have to start rethinking. You know what they want to. I think a lot of people, when they think what they want to do with their lives, what they want to do with their future, they think in terms of the social constructs that we currently have, the way our society is currently set up. You know, what would be a good thing to do in order to make a living, um, to satisfy a need, um, to satisfy something creative within themselves. You know, but they're looking at the constructs that are available for them right now. But looking mm -hmm. 10 years ahead, you know, 20 years ahead, uh, even sooner than that, perhaps, there may be a, just a different way that everything is, is run because of algorithms and... and um, moving forward. So you, your, your occupation, you think it might be a great idea. It might become obsolete um, or actually not be something that would uh, fulfill you because the, the actual implementation of your occupation might change entirely. So it's like something that you think you would enjoy, you know, um, might not even be like a lot of people might want to be a public speaker because they love to travel <laughs> from city to city. But now it's all, all over Zoom, you know, something as simple as that. You know, you're just sitting in your in your living room you know, and you're talking to 100 people over a Zoom platform, you know, because of the current mm -hmm. pandemic, you know. So even that alone, even though it's temporary or it could be seen as, you know, seen as temporary, even something like that changes uh, the dynamic of, of, of what you want to do with your with your with your future. You know, um, yeah. the traveling component is taken out of it. You know, for some people, that's good. For some people, that's well, that's what I enjoy the most. <laughs> it's going from hotel to hotel <laughs> and, you know, checking out new cities on my day off and whatnot. So there's so many changes happening and, um, yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. And the thing is, you know, um, about algorithms, algorithms are, you know, for those of you who've heard the word and, and don't know what it means, it's just basically a mathematical equation where, you know, you're looking for a certain result and you're trying to solve a problem and then, you know, gives you a, a solution. And so an algorithm could be, you know, how to, you know, find clothes that match, you know, for example, and then it helps you to find, you know, things that are in certain color or certain size and things like that. So, you know, you use it all the time when you use Amazon and you're trying to find some kind of product. Uh, it also, you know, we use, you know, I think I talked about this before uh, on YouTube, for example, if you're trying to find a recipe on how to make, you know, carrot cake, uh, it will give you the best recipe that most people agree on and that the algorithm has found is the best recipe for carrot cake. And, you know, they base it on attention from people, how long people watch that video and how many people put likes on that video. And, you know, a lot of different uh, things, people, words that people use when they comment on the video and things like that. And by by looking at those things, the algorithm can find the best, you know, carrot cake that's out there. Um, and then you try the recipe yourself and then you can, you know, respond with a, a comment saying, yeah, it was it was the best you know carrot cake or whatever and so that's how it's going to happen with everything there's going to be you know tons and tons of videos on the internet but the ones that are going to stand out are the ones that are the best at whatever they do so one of the questions that most people should ask themselves when they go on the internet is what do you do that that you do really well you know what are, what are the things that you do really well and that's what you want to be doing business with which is a good thing you know if you look at it 
from the client's perspective, you want to be receiving the best, you know, service or the, the best, um, you know, product you can get. And that's what the internet's going to do. And it's already doing it. You know, there's a lot of things that, you know, get created on a daily basis, but not everything makes it, you know, only certain products really become popular, you know, same with posts, you know, people post something and, you know, not everything goes viral and unless it's something really funny or it's something really good. And so that's kind of how algorithms work. And, and in this, the, the sad thing about algorithms is that eventually, you know, this is going to be so, it's going to get so good that we are all going to basically pre- depend on these algorithms and we're not going to be able to, to have a real job anymore because computers are going to do, you know, everything better than we can, you know, because a computer doesn't get tired. A computer, you know, can you know do a million things at the same time. And it's just, there's so many benefits to it for us, but at the same time, You know, there's all these things that are changing, like our lifestyles. We're going to, you know, have to find something else to do to keep ourselves busy. Companies are already working on trying to find, you know, cures for depression and things like that, because that's what happens when you don't do anything, right? When you're just sitting around doing nothing, watching YouTube videos, eventually you start getting a little depressed because you're not really doing anything, you know? Yeah, because I think that part and parcel of what's missing from that is the human component. You know, the mm-hmm. um, um, everything is, is figured out for you based on, tr- you know, um, on observations and, and trends. But, you know, that doesn't mean that a person's subjective experience is is being taken into account, because if you're planning a vacation, an algorithm might come up with a, the best itinerary because that's what most people have done. That's what the most uh, output has has been recorded, you know, or like you said, the best carrot cake. But I might try that carrot cake and say, I like it, but my mother used to make a better one. You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> yeah. and I, you know, and that might be very much the case, but this is the one that's been delivered to me every time I pump in carrot cake. So they're all, it depends how it's been calculated and the human component is missing. So that's also going to contribute to depression because it takes away our sense of control. It takes away our sense of autonomy and self-agency. And computers can figure things out better than people, and they have a lot more, like you said, endless energy. But they don't necessarily have the very thing that we're seeking to to fulfill. You know, if all I want is just a recipe for carrot cake, I just want to know how to make it. Then sure, that's a very you know uh, a useful tool to have an algorithm like that. Uh, but if I really want to know how to make my own the best that I want to make it or, or the way my, my, like I said, my mother used to make it or, or the way someone I, you know, someone else I know used to make it where I want to add something creative to it. You know, that's, that's, a, that's, that's a whole different ball game. And, um, you know, it, it, I believe that, that we have to be careful with the self agency being taken away, um, and choices that are more intrinsic, you know, choices that are more subjective to us. Um, cause everything's being handed to us. Like this is the best we've calculated this, the computers calculated this, uh, and so this is what you should do when you take your trip to uh, to Hawaii, or, or you should, or you when you go visit Yellowstone. This is these are the hikes that are noted to be the best and the safest and the, and the best for output for <laughs> for cardio. Like I don't care. I don't. I don't want to take that trail. I want to take the trail that you know that my cousin took uh, last April when he went, for example. And he said it, it was just amazing. Um, and I, he showed me the pictures. I want that one. And I want to put that one together <laughs> with that hotel. And the, I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want this output. You know what I'm saying? So that, yeah. you know, you know, we could become a little bit too dependent upon algorithmic answers to things. I mean, for some things, yes. For some things, even today, even right now, I wish I could just, okay, just tell me the best, blah, 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 you know, because it really depends upon your interests and your strengths. But when, when it comes down to things that you really want to explore, and learn, you know, um, like, for example, I'm about to uh, venture into learning the Greek language, you know, that's something that I want to do is learn Greek. So what's the best? Yeah. So what's the best way to do it online? If an algorithm would tell me, it might be the best for a lot of other reasons, but not my best for my aptitude, how do I pick up a language at this point in my life, it might not be um, the best or the way it's teaching me the language, it might be efficient enough, but not the most efficient for me, because I might learn slightly differently than somebody else. So I might just enjoy the pictorial presentation of another program better. And it's, it's worth it for me to research rather than have an algorithm do it for me. You know, it really depends upon so many different factors. And I just, I, I'm concerned that the human factor will be taken out 
and that will contribute to anxiety and depression. And I don't think we need anything to contribute to anxiety and depression right now. I think we need something that contributes to the, uh, you know, alleviation of it um, or, or given what we've been going through in 2020, which has been probably the year of anxiety and depression for um, yeah. a, lot, a lot of reasons. So that's my but now, two cents. Yeah. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to contradict, well, not contradict, but tell you, you know, I agree with a lot of the things you said. But at the same time, let's say you've, you know, when you said you went to Hawaii and you wanted to try this, you know, go on this trails, I feel like, you know, I have some kind of, I, I travel a lot, right? So whenever I go to a place, I, I really want to see the things that are most important in that place. And I do this, you know, almost every time I go anywhere is, you know, even at home, I, I, I sometimes I go into the top 10 things that you could do in this area or this city, right? And that's what the algorithm will tell you, like the top thing. 10 things that people went to and I agree sometimes those things are like what people want to go to this thing and there's like things that have tons of you know um uh comments and stuff but really uh it really to me it helps to to see you know what are most people interested in an area because I don't want to feel like I I went to Hawaii and I didn't try the best you know trail or the most beautiful area which you know most of the time it tends to be where most people want to go or you know um if i if i want to learn a language like you said and i don't know how and i've never done it before and i go on the internet and i googled it i i really appreciate you know there's something that most people have used that has helped them right and so i i try it and yeah maybe maybe it's not the thing that like you said that that works for me but but if most people have tried it and it worked for them then the chances of it working on me I think are much higher because I've seen that before. It's not always the case, of course. I I agree with that, but but for the most part, I feel like you know if I Google like you know the best book on the subject and I I get the you know the top search whatever book that comes up, I read it and most of the time I find that it does have you know a lot of the answers that I was looking for, and that's I think that 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 does it for a good algorithm is something that you know can really find the things that we're looking for and i'm I'm sure you've had this feeling before when you when you have a problem you know you're trying to fix you know something at your house like the mm-hmm. faucet or or trying to install tile or whatever some yeah. some lame thing that you want to do you google it and then you find a video that has somebody doing that and then you watch the video and it's only a couple of minutes but it gives you that answer and it feels like oh my gosh you just took off a you know this big weight off my shoulders because now i see how you've done it and i can do it myself and it took me like a couple minutes to learn it you know and that's what I think it's really great about algorithm algorithms. But at the same time, I agree with you that sometimes we need to have, you know, something that's more specific to us. And and that's the thing, too. Like, if it doesn't exist on the Internet and you find something that you can't find, then you do it yourself. And then you will have something that can really help other people that are like you, you know? Yeah, and I, I agree that if it's something that I don't really know too much about, I would love recommendations, you know, um, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, Recommendations or guidance. uh, What's the best, what's known to be the best, especially if it's something, again, that I'm either don't know very much about or don't feel very confident about or just need to get done really quickly. Just tell me something that works. It's worked in the past. But I'll give you an example of like an algorithm that we have already that uh, most people probably, you know, have have been focused on more so now because of the lockdown. Um, For example, on like Netflix, we'll have the top 10 flash across the screen. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of a new thing. I don't really remember that before. I'm not saying it's because of the pandemic, but it's there. It's like top 10 are popular now on Netflix. And you'll look through it and it'll be like 10 different things that you can watch. And that's just a very simplest, simplistic example. But I'll I'll look at all 10 of them. Like none of them appeal to me. And I've watched, a few, <laughs> you know, and I'm just, I mean, and they fluctuate all the time. They're different almost every day. And I think it's based on an algorithm who's watching what and who's maybe even, you know, like how often they're being watched. You know, that's always been like um, the Nielsen ratings. I think they used to call it years ago, decades ago. They used to, um, you know, they used to censor who's watching what on television, which of course they want to do. That's for marketing purposes. But just because everybody else is watching it, I'm not going to mention titles of shows, but oh my goodness. I mean, people are like, oh, this is so popular. I'll watch it. And like, why? What's so popular right. about this? Or you know what I mean? It's like yeah. a- anything, take anything, like a blockbuster film, and you'll have different <laughs> varying opinions on whether it was good, especially if people are like in um 
you know, have like a, like a community, like Star Wars or whatnot. Everybody has different opinions about the rise of Skywalker or about uh, The Force Awakens <laughs> or, or the new Harry Potter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Everybody's got yeah. their in, their influx, you know, they're in their and, and it's, you know, that's that's the thing. How do you rate that? How do you algorithm that? Because you could tell me this is the top rated film. This is the top rated show. Uh, oh, you've got to see this. You've got to watch this. You've got to see this performance. And I watched it. I'm like, I liked it. But that's not, you know, it doesn't resonate with me quite the same way. That's what I'm saying. The subjectivity is gone. So um, it depends. If I'm looking for something to watch, recommendations are great. But algorithms, it depends how, you know, it depends how stringent they become. If they become those, you become your only options because those are the top 10. Every time I plug something in to Google or whatnot, then that's going to be that could be end up being problematic because I'm not being shown the 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 five after the ten, and number fourteen could be what's best for me. That could be the show I really want to watch. That could be the the language kit that I really want to use. That could be the carrot cake that I really want to bake. You know what I'm saying? And it's not being shown to me. So I, I want to have access to okay. Well, where else can I search? I like the idea that Google sends me the top. You know, they do their algorithm work. They do the, a lot of the work for you. But I'm a little bit concerned that, well, where do I find all the other ones that I would really want to know about? And I honestly find still today the best way to gain information on things that I want to know about is, is word of mouth. It's talking to people face to face, social contact. Yeah. I'm having a conversation with somebody. And someone says, have you ever heard of, have you ever tried or what I've done before? And I'm like, no, I never heard of that. They jot it down. They send it to me by a text. I look it up and I'm like, wow. You know, those have been the best innovations I've had for the most part in my life, not Googling it, not algorithms, not checking online. I mean, sometimes, yes, I shouldn't say that always, but for the most part, I, that's the best expansion of my life is learning through other people, what they've done and what they what they know. Um, and that's the best but accumulation now, of knowledge. I, yeah. I tell you, though, they when people give you the recommendations, they tell you what they think is the best for them, right? And I've had it, you know, I've, again, I've traveled all over the world and, and sometimes people tell you, oh, you know, this is one of the best places in the world, blah, blah, blah. And then you go there and it's like, really, this is, this is it. Hmm. But then I tell you, I've had people, you know, in multiple places tell me the same thing about this place. You know, for example, uh, the Alhambra in, in Spain, in South of Spain, I've had multiple people tell me that's one of the most beautiful places in the world for them. Um, and you know, at different times. And then, and then I saw an article saying, you know, uh, retiring in the South of Spain is the best place in the world to retire. And then you go there and then you see what, what they're talking about and it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of what I'm talking about. I think that, that, um, there is a certain, I don't know if you could call it ideal, you know, uh, for carrot cake, there's an ideal for, you know, what beautiful is, um, uh, that could maybe like, you know, when we talk about attraction, for example, they've done studies and I loved a lot of the studies in social sciences where they found that we as human beings find s symmetry attractive. So somebody is, you know, is symmetrical and they're meaning both, both of their sides are almost identical, right? Mm -hmm. They're going to look more attractive to us. So when you look at models or things that are, people find attractive on, on magazines and stuff, they mm -hmm. have certain symmetry. And I think that's kind of what the algorithm is looking for is to try to find the things that, that can make something that's more attractive, more, um, that more people will like, I guess, uh, when you talk about, for example, the, are we talking about shows? you know, the, the, the Oscars, most people agree that when a movie, you know, has won an Oscar or 10 Oscars, whatever, it's because it's good in some ways. Now, yeah. sometimes I've watched movies that won 10 Oscars. And I'm like, really? Yeah, this exactly. is really boring, you know? <laughs> right, right. I yeah. don't think a nomination basically really tells you anything, you know, I, you're <laughs> absolutely, you're absolutely right about the attractiveness of a person. There's been evidence like science has shown that our brain actually perceives attractiveness based exactly on 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 um, on parallels, you know, um, yes, on, yeah. on yeah. But there's also the personal, the human aspect that I talked about earlier, where course, it comes yeah. down to preferences. You know, like you may mm -hmm. show me a pretty face, and I can identify that that person is attractive, but yet I'm not attracted to them. 
which is a different right. component. It's just that's self-agency. That's not my type. That's not my preference. That's not who I'd be drawn to in that way. Yes, my brain picks up that that's a pretty woman or that's an attractive man or that's a handsome you know, um, animal, whatever it may be, because my brain is, 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 our brains are similar in that regard. But preference is, you know, that's the prefrontal cortex. That's the abstract thinking. That's experience and personality and genetics and culture and all kinds of different influences working together. And does the algorithm take that into account? I mean, how, 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 how intricate is this algorithm? You know, I mean, we're talking yeah, about yeah, totally. artificial intelligence at this point. I hope, I mean, or I don't hope, <laughs> I don't know if I hope. And so, by the way, I was going to say somebody out there, somebody out there is saying, "Ugh, I hate carrot cake. Stop talking about carrot cake. <laughs> I know. I know it. I just thought of that when you mentioned <laughs> it. We've mentioned it four times. So choo choose anything well, you like. Yeah. Choose anything you like. I yeah. I could say tortillas because I love tortillas, but yeah. I don't know how many people know what that is. <laughs> I I, I I love carrot cake and I love tortillas too. So I mean, it's like, but I'm just saying. I just thought of that. Someone out there's like, ugh, I wouldn't look that up anyway. <laughs> and there's like, yeah. they're yeah, they're moving on to another podcast at this point. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I was thinking of something that you know, if you if you and that's 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 very true by the way that you know it depends on on a lot of different variables, but I think that's what the algorithm does, and the more. Um, we advance with this technology, the more, you know, um, specific the algorithms can get. For example, Facebook, you know, has 2.5 billion people now, maybe even more uh, subscribers. And these these are people all over the world. And, and they have to choose, you know, what they allow, what they don't allow on their platform. And so the algorithm has actually gotten, for example, uh, I, I, was, I was listening to this podcast where they were saying that, uh, they can do 99% of the times they can, you know, see if somebody's posting something that's, you know, terrorist related because mm -hmm. there are many countries where people put terrorist stuff and, and that terrorist definition varies per country. You know, there's different things that, that, that happen in different places, but you know, there's certain things that are in general things that, that you could say, okay, this is a terrorist comment or a terrorist, you know, video or, or image or whatever so they can actually block those things and, and ban them from the platform and there's other things you know there's you know things that could be considered sexual in some countries and not so sexual in others uh there's signs and things that could be hate you know signs and and hate uh crimes and things like that but in other countries no and so it depends and in, in where you're at and 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 there's the algorithms are trying to to find solutions to all these problems that we have in the world, and mm -hmm. they're getting really good at it. They're getting really good at ad automatizing, you know, making ed everything automatic so that we don't have to think as much. And I I totally agree with you. By the way, we still need to keep our humanity in some way, and that's what this podcast is about: is you know not forgetting that we have you know certain you know individualities things that are that makes us unique you know we are unique yeah. every single one of us but this algorithms this globalization is changing that in some ways and, and it's trying to make you know this mass humanity in some way and i feel like cultures are being lost you know for that reason because we're not you know everyone's starting to listen to the same music and everyone's starting to watch the same shows mm -hmm. and it's starting to get a lot more generalized you know yeah, absolutely. And I agree that in, that in certain circumstances like technology and, um, you know, rocket science and, um, you know, certain kinds of like, uh, using solar panels and energy and all like algorithms are extremely helpful and are really going to help humanity in a lot of ways. Um, you know, when it's more objective or scientific and, and how to improve our lives and how to build stronger buildings to withstand earthquakes and you know, um, better plumbing systems, how to bring, you know, different um, medical, uh, you know, medical advances to people and whatnot. And, and, you know, there's so many things algorithms would be wonderful for even without the human component. So I'm, I'm glad that that's advancing in that regard. But I just think it's important to remember, you know, I mean, something else that's, you know, a big topic, it's too big for, for, for right now, but like, you know, genetic, um, you know, genetic cloning and stuff like that, you know, determining what kind of a baby you're going to have before you have it, so to speak, you know, uh, okay, <laughs> let's just develop an algorithm for the best possible human being. Okay. All right. That could be a little bit interesting, you know, to say the very least. Yeah. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. So, but I understand <laughs> it. I understand it when it's to to um, to deal with sickness or illness or, or birth defects or um, you know making sure everybody's uh, the mother is healthy, giving birth, and you know um, increasing health and and um, you know understanding uh, a person's a medical profile before they're born. Um, you know what I mean? That there's mm -hmm. a lot of good in that. You know, there's a lot of good in that. Uh, but at the same time, when we get to the point where parents want the blue eyes or they want, you know, the fair skin or they want the, uh, you know, the six foot tall and they want to engineer that prior, I get a little, I mean, I don't know, that's that's a whole other topic. But I mean, yeah. if, alg if algorithms go there, I'd be like, OK, you know what? Stick with the solar energy, you know, stick with uh, <laughs> <laughs> how to get me more more gas mileage. I, I, I prefer that. And yeah. That's, yeah. That's, well, yeah. So. We could totally, I mean, I love this topic. We can go on and on. But last thing I'm going to say is, you know, back in the day, I remember when when I used to go out to eat, I would just get in the car and start driving and then go to a certain area and then look for something that was that looked good from the outside. <laughs> and mm -hmm. now, you know, when I go eat, I go on my phone, I go on Yelp. And then I just put, you know, if I feel like Thai or if I feel like, you know, Mexican food, whatever I, I want, I just go in there and boom, it gives me the best restaurants in the area. And, yeah. you know, it's 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 a good thing. It saves you time. But I feel like, like you said, I think it's sometimes it's OK to go back to the old ways of just, you know, seeing what happens. And I think there's some kind of magic in trying things without the algorithms where we just you know, instead of trying to make a carrot cake, we just put all the ingredients together and see what happens. You know, let's just, you know, make something that nobody's ever done before and, and try it out, see how it tastes and that's how I used to make cakes, by the way. Back when I was little, I would just put stuff and see what happens. You know, I'm going to put this and chocolate powder and this and that. And then, boom, I had a weird cake that sometimes I never ate it, but it was fun to, to make, you know. So I feel yeah. like breaking the algorithm is a good way to, to be happy in some ways, you know. That's right. And, you know, don't be afraid to try and fail. If you want to make a carrot cake, you've never made it before, you know, and it doesn't come out well. So through feedback and through trial and error... You'll get better on your own. You know, sometimes yeah. you want a quick answer and sometimes you want to work on it yourself and find out what's best. You know, that's how you grow. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So, yeah, let's do that. Um, thank you so much for your time, Neil. Any last words before we end this podcast? No, just exactly that. You know, uh, isolate as things progress. Isolate what's important to know the answers to and the best itinerary. And then uh, and what's, uh, you know, what, what you have to remain subjective with, what's more personal to you know when you want the quick answers and when you don't want the quick answers and i think that that's okay. that's yeah yeah sounds good thank you so much for your time and remember we're here every tuesday at 6 p.m if you have any comments or questions please let us know what do you think about this algorithms how have they changed your life tell us something that maybe we missed that you want to hear more about we would love to hear from you. Please subscribe to wherever you would listen to your platforms, um, your podcasts. And also, remember, I have my uh, YouTube channel. You can just look up Robert Aceves. I have um, a bunch of meditations now on there that can really help you with all the stuff that's happening in the world and reprogram your mind, etc. So thank you for listening. And we'll, oh, and thank you to everyone, by the way, who's been you know donating money and listening to us every week. We really appreciate that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You are what makes what makes us do this podcast every week. So thank you, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Bye. This podcast is brought to you by MindFit. Please help us to share this podcast with your friends and family to grow this community. And if you'd like to donate to this podcast, or if you'd like to share your comments, questions, or concerns, send them to mindfitpodcast at gmail.com, or you can call us directly at 714 328 four six six one.